Um, so Josiah, you can get started. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Josiah Presley. I come from Texas as an Oklahoman, uh, originally from South Korea. Uh, and I'll kind of dive into that as I share my story with y'all. But I'm so excited to be with you um, this afternoon. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm coming from Texas, so I graduated college back in uh, 2018 from Criswell College, which is a small uh, Baptist college in uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, and I now work there, and then I'm also a youth minister in Mesquite. So that's kind of uh, where I'm at uh, right now. Uh, but originally, I'm from South Korea. And when I was 13 months old, I was adopted, and I was brought over to Norman, Oklahoma, where I grew up, uh, the son of a pastor of worship in a Baptist church. Uh, uh, his name's Randy Presley, and I grew up one of 12 kids. So, um, 10 of us are adopted. I'm your typical middle child. I have uh, six older siblings, no, five older siblings, and six younger siblings. That's how it works out. Um, 10 of us are adopted, seven sisters. So, I grew up all my life being bossed around. Um, <laughs> but I grew up, and at the age of 13, my adopted parents, they sent me down to have a more difficult discussion with me about my adoption story. They told me about how two months into my birth mother's pregnancy with me, she actually had a curatized abortion, which is a type of abortion designed um, for the doctor to go into the mother's womb and uh, rip the baby apart and bring them out in pieces. At the time, they thought the abortion had gone accordingly. They thought everything had gone how it was supposed to, and so they sent her home. But a few months later, she actually realized that the abortion had failed, and uh, I was still very much so alive. And so at that point, uh, I was allowed to let, live, and I was kept and born later on October 7th, 1995. I was placed with the Eastern Social Welfare Society, which is an adoption agency uh, in South Korea. And so I lived with a foster home uh, for about a year before I was adopted and brought over uh, to be a part of the Presley family. Uh, growing up, um, you know, as an adopted kid, you always are curious as to where you came from. You're curious as to your background. And so I was really glad my parents told me this about my story because it's a very important part of my story. But I was also uh, very hurt by the news. Um, as you can tell, I have a deformed arm. That's like very obvious just by looking at me. And so growing up as a kid, I thought uh, I was lesser than everybody I came into contact with. And I thought my deformity made me less than anybody I'd meet. I thought, it didn't matter what I do in life, I'll never measure up to everyone else or anyone else because I have a deformed arm. And so at the age of 13, when I learned um, about my birth mother's decisions, I immediately thought, oh, you are worthless, so you will never measure up to anything. Look, the, the people who should love you the most, your own parents, they tried to take your life. And so it actually took me to a deeper and just darker place. Um, just knowing that, um, just with my self-worth. I'd grown up in a Christian home. We had grown up knowing abortion was wrong. We had grown up knowing that abortion was a taking of innocent human life. And so um, not only was I hurt by that, but all of a sudden there was anger towards my birth parents for their decisions. Uh, I was broken, messed up because of the wrong, evil, bad decisions they had made. And so I hated them. Um, for that, and so I had anger towards them. I had actually I had anger towards any uh, pro-choice person, towards any abortion doctor, Planned Parenthood worker, a post-abortive woman. Um, I would come into contact. I had nothing but um, wrong thoughts towards them. Um, I'd grown up in a pro-life family. I knew abortion was wrong, um, and if I'm honest, uh, it hadn't mattered to me. The pro-life uh, movement, uh, being pro-life, hadn't really mattered to me until that point. At that point, it didn't matter to me in a good way as well, because, like I said, I demonized anybody who would have anything to do with the pro-abortion agenda. Um, and so for years, I struggled with this hatred, anger, um, self-worth, depression uh, problems. And for me, the change came, though, um, when I was 16 years old, and I was at church camp. Um, and at church camp, I met, I met Jesus. Um, and the God of the universe, he wrecked my life. I'd grown up in the church, I'd done all the church things, I'd been that good church kid, but I did it all for the wrong reasons. I did it because I liked the way it made me look, I did it because it made me somehow think I was better. 
Um, it, it's where I found my affirmation. As, as kids, teenagers, you find affirmation in different things, sports, popularity, whatever it might be. I found my affirmation that I was a good church kid. Um, but God wrecked me uh, at the age of 16, and he showed me that I did the church thing because I liked the way it made me look, not because I had a relationship with him. And as he saved me and changed me, he also changed my identity. And I actually found identity in Christ. I found worth in Christ. Not in what I accomplished, not in what I do, not in my deformities, not in the choices of my parents, but in the work of Jesus Christ who actually came and died on the cross for the punishment of my sins. So I found identity in him. I also found, though, forgiveness towards my birth parents. Uh, I was reminded, I, was, I, was, I had it right in my face, if you will, that the God of the universe, he forgave me of all my sins when I sparred against him. The least I could do is forgive my parents for the choices they made. So I found forgiveness towards them. And at that point, it's actually when God started to work in my life and I found my identity in him, I started to actually care about the pro-life movement and the pro-life agenda in a good and proper um, way. Um, as a Christian, again, like I said, I knew that abortion was wrong. You know, Genesis 1 tells us that we are created in his image, that God created us in his image. And so every human being is valuable just by the very fact that you're human. Um, the God of the universe created us in his image, so inherently we have value. And so as I found my value in my creator, he also then reminded me that we're called, as I'm called as a follower of Christ, to protect life, to value life. And so as I began to care about human life in a proper way, uh, God just he began to open doors that allowed me to share in different contexts, like uh, this context we're in today. Um, even. And so, something though I want to just bring to the forefront of our minds um, is this. Obviously, you care about the pro life movement in some way, shape, or form, right? You want to be here today, otherwise, right? It's not like anybody woke up and was like, well, I've got a free weekend. What am I going to do? Well, oh, hey, there's, a, there's some conference going on. Let's just go to a conference, right? Nobody just goes to conferences to go to conferences, right? Um, and if, you, if that's you in here, God bless you, right? Um, you're a different type of person, right? But for, in, in some way, shape, or form, you care about this movement, if you will. You care about this issue. And so what I want to bring to our, the forefront of our mind is why do you care about this issue? What is it that drives you to care about this issue? If I'm honest, even with my story, I don't care about the issue in a good way without the work of Jesus Christ in my life. I don't. Because for years, I knew about my mother's decisions, and I was still an angry, bitter person. But as God changed my life, and as I found value in Him, and as I found um, a proper view of human value that changed the way I viewed my pro-life conviction. That's changed the way I interacted because, you know, we, we need to love the unborn. We do, because in our society, they're the most um, defenseless, innocent human beings, and we say it's fine to take their lives. And so they need to be protected, and they need us to be a voice for them. But at the same time, we can't say we love the unborn and hate our neighbor who's already born, right? I can't say I love the unborn and then hate the, the post-abortive woman, hate the um, abortion doctor, hate the Planned Parenthood worker. I can't say that my God calls me to love other human beings and then hate some human beings. And so what we have to consider is why are you pro-life? What's going to drive your pro-life convictions? And how is that going to cause you to be involved? And so that's just my question I would have for you all. And at that, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to let Claire take over. Thank you.